All right, stage two of Monaco Grand Prix, the Alfa Romeo edition here. Here we go. All right, so I can run basically stock until the end of the stage, of course, as stage two, the very last goal is going to have a PR requirement bump, as you guys might expect by now with these special events, right? So anyway, uh, goal one, we got the uh, ch uh, we gotta warm up the tires, right? So gotta get it up to 100% before uh, during this uh, outlap, and uh, it's moving along nicely. So I mean, if you just you know take it at a normal pace, I don't think you need to go particularly slower than how you would normally race but it should be fine um, this event Monaco Grand Prix does have uh, they provide us with three stages of practice which is more than usual so you know they understand this is a tough track uh, so that gets us you know, some extra time to get familiar with the uh, circuit. And then here we go. 100% now we can just uh, <laughs> go flat out. Maybe a little too excited there. <laughs> Missing my very first breaking point. Um, that's alright. This one, you're, you know, not even ranked, so... As long as you just complete the lap, you know, you're you're good. So, and uh, you do have two laps. So I suppose if you really wanted to overtake more cars, then you have some opportunities to do so as well. And by the way. Um, the Italian Grand Prix is open and I've uploaded the overview for that event. Um, so that one's going to be pretty pricey. So that's uh, going to be an expensive, not difficult, but just expensive event to run through. That was fun though. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Monza. So by the way, if you're on the iOS, I I think there is a new updated version of the game that addresses the whole moving PR issue. So before you either start get started on this Monaco Grand Prix or the Italian Grand Prix, make sure you download that so you don't find yourself, especially if you have driver level up or team principal level up already or planning on getting that during the event. Uh, then you know you won't have to spend as much on tuning so that's something that uh, you definitely want to look into before you get started on these events so you know you don't have to put up with the whole PR gate as uh, fire monkeys call it anyway about to wrap up the first goal here and there we go, through the finish line. And it's gonna be three minutes and 20 se uh, 28 seconds and change. All right. And uh, some 285 driver XP for Kimi Raikkonen here, my chosen driver for this run through. All right. And uh, there were only four cars and I finished dead last, I guess. All right, that's fine. Winning was not uh, a part of the goal, so it's all good. So let's move on to goal two. And this one is going to be a top speed challenge, sort of like the one we had in the stage one, except this time we have to hit it six times. Um, and of course this time we have uh, more lap count as well, right? So 
Last time we had two laps to hit it three times, this time we have extra lap and we have to hit it six times and uh, yeah there should be, um, I mean I think the idea is that you're familiar with the circuit by now that you know you know exactly where you can hit that top speed. Not a terribly high target, uh, 158 miles per hour or 254.26 kph. So uh, on certain, like the the tunnel section, right on the opposite end of where I am now, right. Um, if you enter, make that last corner before the tunnel properly, then you should be able to um, hit the target speed early enough that you can uh, slow down and bring your speed back up again to the, reach the target twice. Of course, when you uh, slow down, you gotta make sure you slow down enough. So it's, you know, if you just like lightly let up on the gas, it's not gonna cut it. You have to like have it fall low like that, right? So I managed to score two instances of hitting that target speed. So, you know, anytime you have certain um, goals that you have to meet in these challenges earlier you get them done I find that uh, it's uh, usually better because you know it's less stressful as opposed to having to you know have that uh, particular challenge hanging over your head while you're still trying to race you know what I mean so all right so now we have racked up all six instances of the top speed target then now we can just kind of enjoy the track and maybe try to overtake uh, Daniel Ricardo here there we go nice smooth line and this time I don't have to do any goofy slowing down speeding back up again business let's go right through Yeah, so, oh, look at that. A couple of more opponents to overtake. Thank you very much. All right. And once again, I don't think it really... I mean, in fact, I know it doesn't matter which uh, rank you finish in. All you... Your primary goal is to hit that target speed six times, which I've done, and then just finish. Right. So, as I was saying, they give you plenty of reasons or plenty of time to uh, learn the track. I think you just have to make the most of it while the opportunity is given, right? There we go. That's a. I like to think that was a cleaner uh, line learning as we go <laughs> and one final right hander there we go and time to bring it on home all right so that is good enough for two goals down in stage two here third place finish not that it really mattered um of course finishing higher rank will have you will have a higher payout so it does matter in that sense but in terms of you know getting through this uh event it doesn't really matter so behind hamilton and verstappen All right, takes out a few more service bars there. And let's uh, continue on to the next goal, uh, which is going to be, uh, once again, managing tires, right? And we just have to finish under 
5 minutes and 30 seconds. And we got 4 laps. So, yes, we got the degrading grip essentially. So, you want to try to make the most of it while obviously there is more grip left on the car. So, be a little bit more on the aggressive side without skidding all over the track because when you skid, you know, you will wear out the tire quicker tires right so your grip will degrade quicker than if you were to just kind of you know keep your car from skidding all over the place so aside from that there really aren't that many places that you can go off track I mean there are a couple of places you can cut corners but uh, for the most part um, you know it's uh, pretty walled off circuit right so, so going off track shouldn't be all that big of a deal but definitely uh, you don't want to do that and you definitely don't want to skip if you can help it but looking at the timer I think I should have uh, I should have plenty of time to wrap this up under the 5 minute 30 second timer, right? Because for 4 laps, that is... Gosh. It's like... How many... Uh, let's see. 4 laps. If it were, we were given minute 20, that would be... 520 for 4 laps, right? And I'm trying to do math. Uh, online again breaking all sorts of carnal rules of internet here uh, but yeah um, the point I'm trying to make is the, I don't think the time is going to you know as long as you don't get stuck somewhere on the circuit uh, like um, <laughs> George Russell he might not make it in time because he got t-boned <laughs> turned sideways then you know uh, you might have to take some extra time to sort of get restarted but as long as uh, you don't find yourself in that you know, precarious position multiple instances I think you should be okay they have given us plenty of time and uh, even with like zero grip that I got going here um, it's not as uh, slippery as when you're starting with the zero percent grip so, um, don't, you don't have to be too caught. I mean, obviously, you need to be aware, but I don't think you need to be overly careful with uh, your, your steering or your braking points. Just, you know, approach with caution, but not overly cautious. Right? You can still, you know, follow your line. Just uh, maybe not nearly as aggressive. But it's should be okay. All right. Now we're under two minutes, and we got this uh, final bit of now. Okay, now it's uh, yeah. I guess that's chicane after the tunnel. You might need to be a little bit more aware of your lack of grip. But uh, like yeah, here. <laughs> okay, maybe it is a little bit. It, the, having the zero percent doesn't make enough of a significance in steering. I'll have to be a little bit more aware. Fine. I'm just gonna blame it on the car. I think uh, I didn't have that big of a difference in grip when I was racing uh, Red Bull Racing RB16. I think it's the I think it's the car's fault. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Alright, I'm tight inside as where's the pan? Speaking of Red Bull, right on my tail here. With, uh, as I have a very compromised grip trying to sneak by me. Alright, I think I can defend 
There we go. All right, so yeah, if I can make it through that chicane after the tunnel, I should be, I should be okay, I think. Uh, he's still giving me a hot pursuit here. Let's see if I can make it through this last bit. Close out the inside. Once again, close out the inside. Well, kind of. That was a little bit wider. But the uh, versatile pen wasn't exactly uh, in position to take advantage of the, the inside line. So, all right. Second place finish. That's respectable, right? 529 driver XP. All right, and 22,800 motorsport dollars for that effort of finishing second in that stint behind Lewis Hamilton, who was, oh my, I still have the best lap, but uh, yeah, I mean, that is almost like 20 seconds ahead, <laughs> 18 seconds, I suppose, technically, but um, yeah, I don't think I, I was ever going to catch up to Lewis Hamilton. That's all right. So, all right. So that leaves us to just one final goal for stage two. And this one is going to be a fuel managing uh, challenge. But before that, we're going to need a few more tunings to go on this car to meet the PR requirement. All right. And of course, the... This group of cars, like Alfa Romeo, uh, Alfa Tori, Williams, and uh, what's the team I'm missing that has that shares the same um, base PR? Uh, Haas, right? I keep forgetting Team Haas. I should remember. <laughs> uh, yes, have the lower end of the PR spectrum, right? So the uh, actual uh, target is lower, 218.2. And as I said, if you are, if you have received the patch from Fire Monkeys by either on the iOS side upgrading to the new version. And I don't think uh, on Android, I think it was just, uh, you know, a patch that you didn't have to actually download a new version for. Um, at least I haven't seen it, uh, but you know, if, if in doubt, just check the Play Store and, you know, if there's a upgraded version, download it, get it patched up so you don't have to put up with any uh, weird, goofy behavior that you might come across from the game. It's not perfect, but we're getting closer, <laughs> right? with each patch, although sometimes I feel like when they fix one thing, they break another. So for all we know, they might have broken something else somewhere else. Because, um, uh, yeah, earlier on, the drafting was not working at the Red Bull ring for uh, Formula One, which was, you know, I don't know, not a huge deal, but it does add a bit more excitement, I think. You know, looking at that speedometer turning orange is pretty cool. I don't know. Simple pleasures, what can I say? Anyway, um, we got 2.4 uh, units of fuel uh, to complete these three laps around Monaco Circuit. All right. Starting the second lap with about 1.55, I don't know, should we call it gallons or liters? I mean, we're using metric system, so maybe we should call it liters. But although, like, that is a really, really good fuel efficiency. <laughs> um, right? It, we'll just call it the units. Anyway... If you're struggling with the goals like this, uh, obviously that just you know fuel management generally is like um, sim very similar to the engine temperature, where you just have to coast a bit more than you would otherwise to conserve the fuel while you are covering distance. So obviously with the fuel management, 
you can um, basically coast, uh, you know, really anywhere you want. Um, but with the engine temperature, generally, you are a little bit. You have to be a little bit more strategic because you know it strikes whenever it strikes. So you just have to um, strategically uh, use your gas pedal, I suppose. Anyway, uh, 0 0.72, 0 0.71, 0 0.7. Now under 0 0.7 units of gas left in the tank, and we are down to the more or less the final or the second half of the lap. Right. So coasting a bit more. Try to conserve that fuel. I think I should have enough to get me through this last bit of the lap. There we go. Yeah, I'm trying not to break as much either. So, you know, coasting through some of the corners that I would normally charge in a little bit more aggressively and break later. I'm just letting up on the gas a little bit earlier so the, you know, downforce will slow me down. Um, so anyway, there we go. Fourth place finish, 318 driver XP for the effort and uh, 14,150 motorsport dollars to go towards today's uh, earnings and uh yeah all right not a bad lap time let's put the car in red we'll get it serviced instantly since uh it's you know nice to have the instant service available all right so that'll do it for stage two all right, and we'll be picking up some 30,000 motorsport dollars for that. And there should be another five gold, of course, that we pick up from this stage. There we go. So that'll do it for stage two of Monaco Alfa Romeo edition. So we'll catch you guys in the next video, stage three.